Good afternoon. <clears throat> I joined the NFO team in January of 1980. Uh, I have been in the hog division <clears throat> in Corning, Iowa since April of 1981. Now I do want to talk about procurement and how it comes together with what we do in the hog division for the producers across this country involved in the National Farmers Organization. Procurement. Now the first thing that I thought of or that most producers think of is more livestock. More livestock to bargain for. Well, I want to take a little different approach to that because procurement to me is a procurement of people. People in the local, in the county, and the state levels. It is extremely important that we have good people at those levels because with good people, the livestock will come. Some time ago, the organization hired staff people. I was one of those salaried staff people. Now, I believe that was a step in the right direction. However, when the salaried staff man came into the country, and I did in South Dakota, in Dimmock, South Dakota, the local meat boards and the county meat committees stopped. Now, I don't care how good you are, how good you think you are, one person does not outdo a committee of people. It cannot be done. Through the Livestock Procurement Program, I believe we can return to a solid structure in the country. And I know that has to be to be successful. We have to again return to pulling the same direction on the same rope. It is very evident to me, setting in Corning, Iowa, that where we have those pulling the same direction on the same rope, we are progressive to the goals of NFO. I'm going to use an example that Dan has talked briefly about in Browns Valley and Big Stone, South Dakota. He says Minnesota. Browns Valley is in Minnesota. The collection point is in South Dakota. I don't think Gary would like to have somebody saying he's in Minnesota. I know that many hogs come from Minnesota. But in August, before the team went in, the average run for the month of August was 700 hogs. And to some in this room that are in a collection point, that may sound pretty good. But since the team has come out of there, the average volume per week is 1,147 head. That's 39%. That's optimal. See, that's what we all want to happen. That's what needs to happen. But it doesn't always happen because we all don't always pull the same direction on the same rope. Through team efforts, with Collection Point and National Office staff and producers working together, Goodness. We've been able to move hogs from a low priced area into a high priced area. Most importantly, then to come back into that same area and negotiate with the packers that you've already taken them away from. Now, that's what I believe 
collective bargaining is all about. And collective bargaining is the only thing that can make it happen. There is no one producer, although there are many who think they are, there is no one producer in this country large enough to make that happen. I have said many times to many producers, the day you join the National Farmers Organization and commit your production, you have more power in the marketplace. I can make any producer in this country larger than he is today if he commits his hogs with your hogs. From the teamwork and the cooperation of the blocking teams and the local membership working together, I've seen a revitalized attitude. Now, I've seen that. Business, no matter what that business endeavor, it doesn't make any difference what that business is involved with, has two main obstacles to overcome in order to become successful. Communication and attitude. Teamwork betters both. We here, your employees, are elated, not satisfied, elated at what has been done with the blocking team's success in changing that communication in attitude. Because they are getting some areas to pull the same direction on the same rope. I like the new procurement arm. It gives me, as a negotiator sitting in Corning, Iowa, an inventory to work with. Now, I realize that there's a lot of people in this room that figure volume has been beat to death. But I assure you, it will never become more evident how important volume is until you set at a desk to try and bargain for a collection point with 50 head of hogs and every packer in the local area is out of the market. I take my job very seriously. You can believe it or not believe it, but it bothers me when that negotiation does not work as bad as it bothers you. Because every day that I go in that office, I go on an ego trip. And you have to. And you can never, never be satisfied. The success will not be attained as quickly as we all would like. Now we all want it to happen tomorrow. And God only knows that I want it to happen tomorrow as well. And it will happen. The National Farmers Organization will be successful. And if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't spend another day here. But it can only be successful, successful if we want it to be. An example from that I'm going to refer back to March of 1980, after I'd come to work for the National Farmers Organization, and I heard Ed Tiverti in Columbus, Nebraska, where I held my first NFO meetings. And Ed Tiverti said, if you wake up every morning and say your marriage is going to hell, I'll guarantee you it will. If you wake up every morning, with a pride and a positive attitude that we will be successful, we will be successful. We must collectively pull together the same direction on the same rope. <clears throat> one produ producer, one member can't do it. 
attitude and communication between all of us will be, become the determining factor. Now I'm going to do something that I did yesterday and I have done before every meeting that I have held since my first convention in Indianapolis in 1981. It says something that I can't say because I've never been able to put words together that well. But it says something that I believe, and you had better believe, if you want to become successful. It is not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotion, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. The next person I want to introduce has got quite a background with this organization, as a matter of fact, 13 years with the Livestock Department in one position or another. And she knows totally the accountability that's needed in order for us to provide that service of prompt payment and accuracy to the producer as well as to billings going to the packer or processor. And I guess I've got to say that no job is complete until the paperwork is finished. Larry says she's the prettiest, too. There's no question. <coughs> the lady is the controller for the Livestock Department, Carol Olive. Thank you, Dan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to personally share some of this accounting information with individuals that operate and manage the collection points for the National Farmers Organization. And I would like to compliment each of the collection point managers and the blockers and the custodians and the meat committees for a job that's been extremely well done this past year. Your participation will continue to make the procurement division a success in 1984. With the increased volume that your collection points will be handling from the procurement drives, it is very important to have the necessary accounting techniques to process the member settlements. I will be showing you today a few transparencies of some of the basic forms that we use in this process. As Dan said, my name is Carol Olive. I have worked with the Livestock Department since January of 1971, and I'm really proud of all the Collection Point and County people that I've worked with over the years because you are the foundation of our organization. Farmers and ranchers are very astute businessmen and women and it is our responsibility to provide all of our shippers with the best service possible in accounting. A form that you will be seeing more and more of as the livestock drives are introduced into your areas is the authorization for negotiation. Your producers with the assistance of a livestock department representative will complete this form and list their production for bargaining in the coming months. He will enter the date, the name, and his membership number if applicable the county, state, telephone number, and address. Next, he will enter the 
period of time the producer is authorizing the livestock department to use his production in negotiations for formulated contract prices. Next, he will fill in the collection point through which he will deliver his product when the negotiations have been completed. The section in the middle of this form is used to indicate the volume of production he will be shipping in each month between the 1st and the 15th of the month and the 15th through the 31st. And towards the bottom is a section provided to list any additional information on the livestock concerning their description. Um, I think about two years ago, the National Board of Directors authorized the commodity departments to allow a producer to have the opportunity to move his production through our programs one time without becoming a member. But the second time, they are required to deduct $75 from the proceeds and have a membership agreement signed. I would like to suggest a, a method that you can use at your collection points in keeping track of these first-time shippers as well as your regular producers. Um, the transparency I have here is called the producer historical file card. You will be able to refer to this card each time the collection point operates to make sure that the sh second shipment has the dues deducted and a membership agreement completed. This producer historical file card is a very helpful tool. By transferring the information from the authorization for negotiation, you will enter the producer's name, his membership number when it has been assigned, the address and telephone number, county, and the number of head the producer intends to deliver each month. In setting up an alphabetical file by the month, you will have a prepared list of producers to contact each week to remind yourself and them of their commitments for that particular month or week. After each delivery, you can record the head count onto this file card and keep a running total of the production delivered through your individual collection points on an annual basis, and then can compare it back to the authorization for negotiation where the initial production was listed. With the added production that will be moving through your collection points this next year, the livestock delivery schedule will be a great help to the custodian to record your week's anticipated movements. As you make your weekly or daily telephone calls to producers to schedule livestock into the collection point, record this information onto the delivery schedule. This form was designed uh, especially for your personal use as you make and receive the schedulings. You'll enter the producer's name, his phone number, the number of head for delivery that particular day, and any other remarks that might be pertinent to that shipment. At the bottom of the form is a space to total up all of the head count on the producers that are scheduling. And then by using this form, you will have a prepared list or total number of hogs or cattle to call into the home office negotiators when you schedule your livestock. All hogs must be scheduled with the home office by 1.30, no, no later than 1.30 the day before the collection point operates. In many areas, I'm sure you're aware, there are substantial discounts that apply to hogs that get into the plants late. The majority of the collection points across the nation are on what we call day ahead pricing. So as you schedule your hogs with the home office negotiators, you will receive your market for the next day's operation. Record the markets onto the market price card. List at the top the name of your collection point and the number of head, the date, and the plant to where the hogs will be delivered. The market you will receive will be for a specific weight range to which discounts will, will apply for uh, weights out of that category. By using this form, I think it eliminates much confusion on pricing when the custodian is ready to make the settlement to the producer. He's already got it on a card. 
and it's set up when he's ready to write the check. In our feeder cattle division, we have a similar form that's used quite often. It's called the ratification card, and it also should be completed before you get into handling uh, settlements on your collection point day. There is a column for uh, choice steers, heifers, and Holsteins, then a space to record the price for each particular weight break. On the reverse side of the card, the weight breaks continue into the higher weight categories. And towards the bottom, there's a section to record whatever the negotiators have quoted discounts to be on excessively filled cattle, cattle with horns, um, fleshy cattle, all the factors that need to be applied. I recently, myself, just returned from the feeder cattle runs in the state of Montana, and I think I used this form more than any other item in making producer settlements. It is much quicker to calculate the drafts when the price card is already prepared beforehand. And it's, uh, you can really recognize the importance of custodians and what their key role is at the collection points when you have to get out there and do it yourself. It's a rewarding experience, however, though, to have the rancher look to you for his year's payment for his production and know that you can pay him properly and know that you're doing it right. The next item, uh, one that most of you are really familiar with, is the scale ticket. This is the source of information for the collection point custodian. It has the producer's total number of head and their weight. One thing that the custodian should insist upon is that the person operating the scales fill out this ticket properly. It must have the collection point name, the date, total weight, head count, kind of livestock, and the average weight. The weigher must initial the ticket and also list any marks and the pin number where the livestock were pinned. The producers are especially interested in this information for their personal records, and the custodian must have the correct figures to process the settlement. When the custodian has received all drafts of the scale tickets for the producer, the next step is to have the producer complete the NFO member delivery notice for livestock. This document serves two purposes. The member will fill in his county, the state, number of head that he delivered that day, the kind of livestock and the date, the collection point name, city and state. Then at the bottom he will verify whether or not the livestock have a recorded mortgage. If there is a mortgage, he should list the name of his creditor to which the draft will be made jointly payable. Have him sign his name, enter his address, membership number and telephone number. The collection point manager will also sign the form. By completing and signing this document, the producer has verified two things. First of all, he's verified that the livestock have been fed in accordance with the FDA regulations and that also whether or not they have a recorded mortgage. Today with financing as controlled as it has been, creditors are going to extreme measures to ensure that they receive their money. Legally, if a producer does not repay his loan to wherever he might have it, the uh, creditors have every legal right to come back onto the member's custodial account if one of these documents aren't on file and insist that we write them another check. So it really is mandatory to have this information on file at all of your collection points to protect to protect the custodial account. We got a draft. The draft that we use in payment for the producer's livestock has taken on a new look several months ago. The new National Farmers logo, I think, makes it a very impressive draft. Once again, it's very important that all the spaces on the draft be filled in properly for your records at the collection point, as well as the producers and the home office. 
Please make sure you spell the producer's name right and list his correct address. On the draft stub, record the invoice date, the invoice number, and the buyer. From the scale tickets, you will enter the number of head, the kind of livestock, average weight, total weight, price per hundred weight, and the gross dollars. On the right side in the outline box, you will enter the producer's patron number. The patron number system was implemented just about a year ago. I think it was in February or March. And it was a system to enable the trust to file more adequate and individual reports on the collection point producers. The trust is required by the IRS to file on an annual basis the production information on each individual member. Below the patron number box in the, is the area to calculate and enter the marketing expense, any trucking, dues, and any other deductions or service additional premiums. You will total all of the deductions, subtract it from the gross amount, and enter the net dollars due the producer. Make sure down at the bottom to uh, enter the date that the draft is written. And as most of you are probably aware, the draft is a document that generates all of the volume and historical information statistics that are maintained in the national office. All of the information on the draft is entered into the computer for permanent records. It is very important that the figures on the drafts be calculated correctly. Correct settlements keep your producer satisfied as well as all of your records accurate. I think it's always a real good bookkeeping practice to recheck all of the figures on the draft before you sign your name to it and in taking that one extra step and checking over your figures it will eliminate the task of trying to collect a back bill when you've made a mistake. The uh, next transparency is the grade and weight evaluation. This is a form that can be used in slaughter cattle or cows when you've used up all of the line entries on your draft stub and you've run out of room you can use the grade and weight evaluation. It's got a line for the producer's name, the kill date of the cattle, the number of head, the kind and description, a tag number, live weight, carcass weight, grade, price per hundred weight, and the gross dollars. At the bottom is a space for the total head count, pounds, carcass weight, and gross dollars. There's also a space provided for the average live weight, price, average carcass weight, and price, and the yield. The custodian will sign and date the form when he completes it. And I think this is a, a form that a lot of our people use in their cold cow settlements and find that it's, it's very helpful. It's not something that, the, that you have to use, but it's a good worksheet. In our feeder cattle division, we have a similar worksheet that the custodians like to use in calculating their feeder cattle transactions. You'll list the uh, producer's contract number if he's on a contract, the collection point name and the name of the representative that is weighing and sorting the cattle, and the date. Next, you will enter your producer's name, his address, and his county, and then on down below you will enter the PIN number. And when you use this uh, feeder cattle sales report along with your draft, it's not necessary to enter that producer's name again. Next you will enter uh, the number of head of cattle, their average weight, description, total weight, price per hundred weight, and the gross dollars. When all of the livestock have been delivered and you have completed your producer settlements, the next form that you will be using is the buyer's invoice and bill of lading. This is a statement 
from which the buyer will be making his payment to the NFO member's meet custodial account in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The custodian will fill in the shipment date, the invoice number, your collection point name, and the name of the buyer. You will list the number of head of livestock, the kind, tag or tattoo number, description, average weight, live weight, price per hundred weight, and the gross dollars. You will also enter on the bill of lading any uh, services that have been negotiated by the buyers as an addition onto the gross dollars. Any services that your negotiators have bargained with the packers are returned to your producer as an added premium and it will also be added into his draft. Make sure to write on the invoice very clearly where the kill sheets are to be mailed. List your collection point name, address, and zip code. Next, down on below, you will enter the name and the address of your trucker, and then you'll have the trucker enter in the total number of head that he loaded, the, the name of the buyer and his address, plus the uh, truck rate, total trucking fee, and the loading time. It's really imperative that the collection point manager sign the invoice and that the trucker also sign the invoice before the livestock leave the collection point premises. Upon the uh, arrival at the plant, the uh, buyer's representative will also sign the invoice and the trucker will enter the unloading time and the weight. In uh, hogs and cattle, the trucker is responsible for delivering this bill of lading to the plant. However, in the feeder cattle division, um, most of the invoicing is done from the home office. However, we do use a bill of lading at the collection point. And it's slightly different from the one I just showed you. You will enter uh, the loading location of the feeder cattle, the date, the name of the buyer and the address, and where the livestock are to be shipped. You will enter the name of the trucker and his address, the number of head of cattle and their description, the time loaded, total weight, and the name of the individual that loaded the truck will sign his name as will the, the truck driver. And you can see on there that little truck, top nose, bottom nose, top middle, bottom middle, it's how many head of cattle they have in each compartment, and that's what the, whoever's loading the truck will enter in those figures. Below is a uh, section for the particular shipping instructions for the trucker as to the exact location where the uh, livestock will be unloaded, and the vehicle identification should also be completed before the livestock leave the pens. When all of the feeder cattle have been weighed and loaded, the custodian will phone the home office feeder cattle division and report the figures. This information will be typed onto the buyer's invoice. We have a special one for feeder cattle, which lists the invoice date, the date the invoice is sent out of the office, the name of the truck line, your collection point name, the invoice number, and the date the cattle were delivered. Below is the section where we break down the total number of head, the description, the average weight, total weight, price per hundred weight, and the gross dollars due from the buyer. And the feeder cattle division relies real heavily on the collection point custodians to phone this information in immediately when they get done with their runs so that the Billings can be sent out to the buyers promptly. The last form that the collection point custodian should use in any given day is the drafts issued reconciliation sheet. This is a total summary of the livestock shipped through your collection point on a particular day. You will enter the commodity, but it will only be one per each reconciliation sheet. It's either hogs, cattle, feeder cattle or sheep. You'll enter the invoice date, the name of the collection point, the name of the buyer, your invoice number, the number of head, total weight, 
and the total gross dollars due. On the next line, you will enter the rate per hundredweight of services due from the packer and the total dollar amount. Add the two together and you will enter in the total of the grand dollars, grand total of dollars to be paid out by the collection point. The next line is to enter the percentage of marketing expense, the deductions, and in feeder cattle this figure will be by the hundredweight. You'll enter the total deductions and the figure of gross dollars less the deductions will go on the next line. This figure must match the total amount of the drafts that you have written for that day. And if they don't, you know you've got a problem. You've made a mistake, you need to go back. Or you've got a, another particular reason uh, why the figures don't match, like possibly you have collected an old back bill from a particular producer that day. If you have, you need to write that down in the special section provided. To keep all of the reports current, it's very important that the custodian mail the reconciliation sheet and the white copies of the drafts to the Home Office Accounting Division as soon as possible. From these figures that are um, mailed in by the custodians on the drafts, all that information is punched into the computer, which automatically in turn then uh, calculates the commission drafts that are due back to the collection point managers and the custodians. I know that I've been real brief today in my uh, explanation of, of the forms that are used, but we have complete form procedures in the home office. I would uh, like to this next year get out and travel around a little bit more, meet each one of you, and uh, hopefully I can help you. Any questions you might have on accounting and we're always available by telephone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. That pretty much sums up this portion of this meeting. I'd like to close by saying that the direction that we have taken in the last year to two years to reestablish that communication and that service center for the membership is going to be the direction that this livestock department will continue to go. There's a lot of areas that we've got requests to come into. There's a lot of areas that we need to develop and implement staff or technicians within the various divisions. Step by step, we're working county by county to fill those gaps to provide every bit of service and communication that we know how. And with your support and assistance, we're going to continue to strive to make this collective bargaining and cost of production a reality. I thank you all for coming in this afternoon. <laughs>